Joshua 23 and 24 are really incredible chapters in the Old Testament. There are a lot of incredible chapters in the Old Testament, but these are two amazing ones. Joshua 23 is significant because it's essentially Joshua's farewell speech. And it turns out that throughout scriptures, when you have an important prophet or leader about to pass away, you will find them sharing their most significant teachings and encouragements and commandments to people, and they're called farewell speeches. Let me share with you where you might find other farewell speeches throughout scriptures. And it might be a fun study experience is to compare and contrast these different farewell speeches from these different prophets and leaders throughout scripture. You have Jacob, or Israel, in Genesis 49. Joseph, who gives his farewell speech to his brothers in Genesis chapter 50, verse 24. Moses to the people in Deuteronomy chapter 31. We have it in Joshua 23 and 24. Uh, King David, 1 Chronicles 29. Jesus, Matthew 28, verse 18. Paul in Acts 20, verse 18. Lehi in 2 Nephi chapters 1 through 3. King Benjamin, his speech is a form of a farewell speech. 2 Nephi 33 is Nephi. And you can actually even look at Mormon, that he actually gives us several farewell speeches. Even Moroni does. They're very powerful. And they all follow kind of similar patterns of laying out the key things that they know that if we do, will be on God's covenant path. The other significant part of Joshua 23 and 24 is the covenantal context of um, following the pattern that we saw revealed in Exodus chapter 20. Now, the technical term for this covenantal pattern is called a suzerain vassal treaty. That simply means you have a great king with a group of people, and the king will introduce himself, review all the great deeds that he's done for everybody, and then invite them to show their loyalty to him through a series of stipulations or expectations for loving loyalty. Then he'll identify the, stipu the, the consequences of living those stipulations, whether blessings or curses, and then witnesses will be set up. Sometimes you'll build an altar, or you sign your name to a document, or you'll put it into the Holy of Holies. This covenantal format shows up throughout Scripture in all sorts of really interesting places. And the point here is summarized by this. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. Well, how can you prosper in the land if you don't know what the commandments are? And if you don't know what God expects for us to show covenantal love and loyalty, it's hard to show it. So God is very clear to his prophets to teach them how to teach the people what to do. And we have those instructions clear and plain for us today. We have modern-day prophets that if we follow them, we also will know exactly what to do to show God that we love him and that we're loyal to him. And thereby, we will also be able to be in our holy lands in peace and prosperity, for that is what God desires to give all of us.